Hey, Dr. Osborne here. Today, Grace writes in with this question. She says, Dr. Osborne, I've had my thyroid gland surgically removed. Are there things I should be doing nutritionally to help support my missing thyroid and to help make sure that my medication is doing its job? It's a great question. And very, very simply put, it depends on the kind of thyroid medication you're taking. Many doctors prescribe something called T4, and there are different versions of T4. One of the most common is levoxy or levothyroxine. And if you're taking a prescriptive T4 and you just want to nutritionally support, make sure that that T4 ends up doing its job efficiently, one of the things you want to be aware of is that T4 has to be converted into T3. T3 is the active thyroid hormone. And so taking T4 is great, but your body still has to convert it. So what helps your body convert it? Two things, selenium, making sure you get enough selenium in your diet, and number two, iron, getting enough iron in your diet. Both of those nutrients are very, very critical for the conversion of T4, the inactive thyroid hormone, to the active version of, of thyroid hormone, which is T3. So again, selenium and iron. Now you can get selenium from foods like chard. If you like lettuce, add some chard into your lettuce. Brazil nuts, another great source of selenium. And of course, iron, most good sources of iron come from animal products. If you're a vegetarian, you can go to things like spinach, um, and spinach can be a good source of iron, but you may want to consider supplementing if your iron levels aren't coming up with vegetables or other vegan-based products. Beyond converting T4 to T3 with selenium and iron, we also have to consider the next step in thyroid hormone function. Once you have T3, the T3 has to be able to communicate to your cells. This is where the magic happens. When T3 talks to your DNA, that's what increases your metabolism. That's why thyroid hormone is so important. It regulates our metabolism. So how does T3 communicate to your cell's DNA? It does so with vitamin A and vitamin D. So if you don't have these two nutrients, if you're deficient in these nutrients, maybe you've been told to avoid the sun and your vitamin D levels are low, or maybe you just don't get a lot of food sources with vitamin A and vitamin D, understand they're very, very critical for your T3 to talk to your DNA to increase your metabolic function. So you can always ask your doctor to measure your vitamin A and your vitamin D levels to ensure that yours are okay, but you can also, one, get more sunshine, two, consider liver as a food source. It's an excellent source of both of those nutrients. Then we have one more step in thyroid hormone processing, which is you have to, once the thyroid hormone talks to your DNA, there's one more step that requires omega-3 fatty acids to really take your metabolism to where it's supposed to be. So. Omega-3 fats are critical as a last stage nutrient to ensure that your thyroid hormone is activated fully. So making sure you're eating enough wild caught fish or other sources of omega-3 in your diet is very, very critical for thyroid function. Again, this is all important if you've had your thyroid removed and you're on a T4-like medication or a T3 medication, it's equally important. If you haven't had your thyroid removed, this information is just as valid. All these nutrients are still necessary to help metabolize and process your thyroid hormone appropriately. So hopefully that answer is helpful for you. Hopefully you can get your doc to run those tests. And if you do, if your doc runs those tests, you find yourself deficient. And if you start supplementing, remember this too. When you start supplementing, sometimes the medication can feel like it's working better. In essence, you, your, heart might, your heart rate might raise. You might start getting hotter. You might start having anxiety or trouble sleeping at night. If those things are happening as you supplement, always go back to your doc and have this monitored because it's possible your medicine might be too strong. And so you want to have that relationship with your doc to make sure that the two of you together can monitor that to make sure that nothing is going south for you. Hey, and something else that you really want to consider, again, whether you've had a, a thyroidectomy, this removal of your thyroid, or whether you're just struggling with hypothyroid, a gluten-free diet is critical. There's so much research now linking gluten exposure to creating hypothyroid problems. So you definitely want to get a gluten-free diet dialed in in your lifestyle. And if you'd like more advice on the gluten-free diet, kind of how to navigate it, Make sure you visit us 
over at glutenfreesociety.org. We've got a whole bunch of videos and articles on the gluten-free lifestyle for you right there, and it might make the difference between your thyroid functioning really, really well or not functioning well at all. This is Dr. Osborne with Ask Dr. Osborne, wishing you an excellent day. Hey, if you've got a functional medicine or health question that you'd like me to answer for you, make sure you send me an email, glutenology at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to create a video answer just for you. Have a great day.